Time now is 10 minutes past nine. It's time to talk high tech with uh, Mr. Paul Brislin joining us via Skype on his iPad this morning. First time with the video. G'day there, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Oh, no, don't put me up there. My God, man. I can see myself now. It's appalling. Immortalized now. <laughs> Where did it come from? No, shocking. I've no. got a good face for radio. I like to keep it that way. Oh, no, you've got a great face for TV. Um, <laughs> and this isn't your first time, of course, in that visual medium, I do believe. I think you were a correspondent on a um, big national network uh, in the oh, past. Right. Yeah, but I never had to see myself, so that was okay. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just block out half the screen. That'll there we are. Right there now. Hey, awesome. let's, let, let's crack on with it because um, there's plenty to talk about, uh, including the Skynet law. We're calling it the Skynet law, the copyright Skynet. law. That has come into effect effectively in the last 24 hours. It has, it has. So uh, this is the new Copyright Act. It's supposed to kick off uh, in the first, um, <laughs> you've got to get rid of that picture, in the first uh, week of September. But uh, they can start monitoring from 21 days before it comes into effect, which means that as of uh, this week, uh, any online activity, and particular BitTorrent, uh, is prone to be monitored. So... Uh, there's been quite a debate in Parliament about it. Um, Gareth uh, Hughes from the Greens got up and uh, and asked some pointed questions about the lack of public information that's available from government about this. Uh, and I don't think the minister did very well, Minister um, Simon Power. He basically pointed to Internet NZ's new site, threestrikes.net.nz, and said, there you go, yeah. knock yourselves out. Right. But uh, from government themselves, uh, very little information whatsoever. They've They've... Um, seemingly not realise that the website needs to go live before the law comes in. Uh, and um, they've been working to a September 1 deadline instead of to the middle of this oh week. So clearly they don't understand their own law. No, and including, I saw a, um, a story going around on Twitter yesterday, I didn't have time to investigate, but apparently the, the government yeah. might get caught up in the law themselves. That's, that's right. Um, some wag called, uh, who calls himself drunk on the Pope's blood uh, claims to have access to Parliament's Wi-Fi network, and uh, five minutes after the uh, the law came in, uh, began downloading uh, Miley Cyrus um, MP3s uh, as fast <laughs> as it would let to carry him. Now that's what he's saying. Uh, whether this is true or not is another matter. You yeah. know, I, I really do wonder. Given what um, Parliament's uh, parliamentary services are like, uh, they wouldn't allow mm. Blackberries or iPhones for a very long time. So mm. I can't imagine that they allow bit torrenting. But, you know, it, this is one of the problems here. What happens when the notice arrives? Well, it goes to the Speaker of the House. Uh, what happens when Parliament gets three notices? Well, potentially they have to then um, cut themselves off from the Internet. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the impact on businesses is really quite remarkable. Um, you know, never mind the individuals. Uh, I've discovered uh, a U.S. judge, um, Judge uh, Harold Baker of the Central District of Illinois, who is questioning whether or not you can identify somebody from uh, as an infringer from their IP address at all, primarily because he says that, uh, and I'll quote from him here, uh, this is from an April hearing uh, about these kinds of issues, IP subscribers are not necessarily the copyright infringers. The infringer might be the subscriber, someone in the subscriber's household, a visitor with her laptop, a neighbour, or someone parked on the street at any given moment. Yeah, but and doesn't uh, our law? But doesn't our law say that the owner uh, or whoever pays the bill yeah. on that account is the one that's who right. will be held account, no matter who downloads? No matter who downloads it, that's right. It all comes back directly to the account holder, uh, and they're responsible for everything that goes on. Now, um, that's all fine, well and good, if you know what you're doing about Wi-Fi connectivity and, um, and, and can secure your own connection. But when you're um, a little old um, deer who's got no tech support beyond you and me talking on the radio once a week, uh, you know, they could well find themselves uh, in the awful situation of being served with a notice and having no way of proving that they didn't mm. download uh, any copyright material. Mm. Now, I also saw a tweet yesterday saying that uh, an ISP, um, unnamed at that stage when I saw it, had already received a letter. Uh, I, I didn't see that, but uh, the letters have been flowing thick and fast for at least the past, I would say, five or six years um, lots of ISPs get them. They tend to just ignore them and throw them in the bin and say, well, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, uh, you know, they've been able to push back because there have been no laws governing this kind of uh, thing. Um, it's uh, The onus under our law is on the copyright holder to send the notice uh, or an agent acting on behalf of the copyright holder. Yeah. So you're not just going to get a fishing expedition, hopefully. Uh, you, you'll actually have to be targeted. But... 
you know, even even Judge David Harvey, who's uh, the Manukau District Court, he, he said that about 30% of the notices that come through uh, are, um, are bogus. They, mm. they don't relate to anything in particular and, and have no evidence. Mm. So, you know, it's that that's a real concern. Uh, if you have to try and prove that somebody's bogus claim uh, isn't legitimate, uh, how, how do you do that? How do you prove a negative? It yeah. becomes very difficult. So by the sounds, there is, um, but just, just by gauging on social media, there is going to be a lot of um, civil disobedience on this matter. Um, don't, I'm not sure yes. how, how long that will last. But um, that website that you <laughs> the website you mentioned, uh, threestrikes.net.nz, is very good. It's a very good resource and will tell you what is being monitored and what isn't. It's not saying, it's not saying that you should be doing the stuff that perhaps you are doing, but it's saying what is mo- monitored and what isn't. I think that's very helpful uh, it is it yeah. is especially in an environment where uh tvnz has yet again removed a tv show from um from screening in new zealand simply because yes. um had two episodes and well clearly that's enough yeah we're talking uh, about um re- what is it to, uh, justified justified was that renegade justified Just- yeah that's right yes yes so uh two or three episodes in um oh goodness we don't know what to do with this so we'll pull it from air this is one of the most popular tv shows in the u.s well into it's filming its third season now um tv and z doesn't know how to market and so that's that it's gone yeah yeah nuts and 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 then it just it, it spirals because um because people who are into these really good quality high quality shows don't expect TVNZ now to show it or similar shows, no, so they just go yeah. download anyway, and so then TVNZ yep. doesn't get the viewers, and then it just spirals out, and TVNZ's yep. um, business yep. model fails, Collapses. essentially. And yeah. we end up becoming um, uh, charitable organisations for broadcasters. Yeah. So get your cap on, and we'll put it out in the street in front of the studio, and you can throw coins into it as yeah. you go past. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Now, right. now, now, it's something that um, people might have noticed over the past few days on Twitter, a lot of Twitter spam. I've certainly had a few oh. direct messages and at messages that turn out to be spam. And did you get one from me? Um, no, I got one from um, oh. Jody Ihaka, I think is a journalist, oh, yes, yes. actually saying, um, oh, it's saying, have you... Well. Have you been saying about this to to other people on Twitter? Saying stuff about me? Is this true? And then a link. <laughs> and then the link. Yes, and I got that from another journalist. Um, we're a promiscuous <laughs> lot, clearly. Um, and uh, and I clicked on the link, and it took me to what looked like the Twitter login page. Uh, and my connection at work's quite flaky in my own defence. Um, so quite often I get kicked off, oh. so I have to log back on. So I just went, oh right, oh no, Logged you myself. you got fished. Um, and I got fished. I did. And the next thing I know, I was getting direct messages from people saying, your account's been compromised. You're a moron. And so, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, the shame. Yeah. The shame oh, of the, it all. <laughs> the shame. So, um, yes, I'm currently, my avatar is, is Doug from uh, the movie <laughs> Up, wearing his cone of shame, uh, because uh, it's a rookie mistake. It's brilliant. <laughs> You're a moron. You know, life catches up here. So, yes. Uh, so, you broke um, all the cardinal rules. We should tell people that, that the rules are, right? So that... So yeah. if you if you click on a link, if you do happen to it, the first thing you do is not click on the link. But if you do click on the link, you must look yep. at the address bar. Is it is it Twitter or is it Facebook or is it ASB or does it say something else in the address bar? We, that's right. That's yeah. right. And, and I didn't. And, uh, you know, a lot of the links that you get, especially in social media, are shortened by the various shortening services, yes. TinyURL, Bitly. Uh, everybody seems to have them, the Herald. They all, they all come out with their own links these days. Uh, and the problem there is that you get used to the idea of just clicking on a link and it doing a variety of strange things before it opens up um, your page. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it was no surprise to me at all to see the, the, what looked like the Twitter um, login page yeah. uh, sitting there for all the world to see, and um, yes, I got I got badly caught. That, so that, the that, trick, of course, is, um, to to change your password straight away as soon as this kind of thing happens, yeah. is log back on, uh, change your password, uh, and secure yourself. But it's not that easy when you're using an application like an iPad or an iPhone application to uh, to actually do that. It gets to be really quite awkward, and right. it took me at least forty five minutes, I would say, to get it all sorted. Yeah, you must have felt like a noob. <laughs> oh, the cone of shame! But, but but at the same time, this is also the responsibility of Twitter um, to yeah. when when people are uh, logging stuff as spam. Every time I get a spam message, I log that as spam, and there That's must right. be a certain amount of other people are doing that. And their algorithms yep. should be sorting this out quick quickly, and and it shouldn't be spreading right. as fast as as it is. 
No, no, that's that's right. And I think um, uh, they really do have to take this quite seriously. And that's going to be quite difficult for them because they, they are a small organization. They don't have, um, have billions of dollars in cash because they've got no revenue stream. Uh, so they, they need to figure this out in a hurry because otherwise it will cripple the service. Yeah. Uh, no, you won't be able to trust um, direct messages. You might not be able to trust um, uh, you know links that people send you in, in plain sight of the rest of the world. Uh, you know that that will really cause them quite some problem, and um, and as a user of it and and a busy user of it, I, I think that would be a crying shame. Mm. All right. Well, it's been fun using the competitor's product on the iPad, not using FaceTime, but using <laughs> Skype. No. <laughs> Skype on the iPad, which is a lovely thing. But uh, I really, I've got to go back to the gym. So <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, a little bit of a nip and tuck here. <laughs> Maybe my back teeth can come out. That would be fun. Paul Brislin, he is on Twitter as well, twitter.com forward slash um, Paul Brislin, um, and he's the uh, the one with the, the shame-faced uh, avatar at the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Yes. It is uh, 21 minutes past nine now on the, uh, on the Radio Whammer Breakfast here on...